Hey, hey, it's PT Sean, aka Sean, and welcome to the sports, you know, fastball podcast known as the Fail Line. Where I took a couple shots and talk a little fail. And I got a little special guest with here. Uh, uh, what's your name again? You know? You don't know my name. Nah, I don't. Uh, like, like you, you walked into my studio, which is the living room, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, I got, I got my dad on here, special guest on here. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we're going to hop straight into new baller news real quick. LeBron says he would not be visiting the White House until Joe Biden uh, get into, like, officially in office. A little start, a little political there, but yeah, yeah. He's been outspoken about the other president, and yeah, pretty much. I don't think anybody's going to be visiting the White House until, until 45 leaves. I mean, like, uh, I mean, it's Tom Brady when he might go to the office. I don't know. I mean, I mean, he is first of all. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens in a couple of weeks. Cause I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna show up. Why, why you say that? Well, because the last time they won a championship, he didn't show up. So Lakers got the best record on the West at the time I've uh, written this down. We'll type it down. No shock there. LeBron and the crew best record, seven wins and uh, three losses at the time we uh, type it down. Okay, um, they are currently eight and three. I looked this morning. They're currently eight and three. Even better. And I think they have the overall best record in the league right now because uh, I believe your next line says something about the best in the East, which is the Sixers that are at seven and two. Um, they are currently seven and three. They lost to they lost to the Nuggets, I believe, last night. So just a little update for what I've seen right there. So yeah. They're probably not the best, but they are the best when you're typing this 76ers at the east side. They're still on the top of the list, which is a very good. I like the team. It's but they're playing pretty well. They're playing pretty well. It's them in Boston that are now 73. They're tied for the best in the East. LaMelo Ball is the youngest player in history to get a triple-double. Oh, that's lovely. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, that's that's cool. Um, a lot of people have been tuning his horn this year. I guess that he's uh, he's uh, living up to the hype, so to speak, and that's a whole lot of hype he has to live up to. His father is is absolutely all out of bounds. Well, I will <laughs> say he looking excellent out on the court, especially with his passes and everything. He plays like John Waterman with all the assists and stuff. Wow, John Wall, that's an interesting that's an interesting point. I would have never thought I would have never thought you would have said that or picked that that particular person, John Wall. Okay. All right, I I I can see that. I would say though he's playing more on the on the lines of uh, Damian Lillard when he first came into the league because, right. of, because of the fact that he was basically he wasn't he didn't start out being a starting, you know, scoring point guard. I mean, he was doing a lot with the assists. Now with confidence and, and experience, the young man is, is absolutely dominating his position. So, you know, although, uh, Dane, please, please, please don't give up 62 on nobody else. I mean, that was that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I don't he, he playing way better when his brother started out. His brother is all right, player, all right, player. If he, um, if Manello Ball uh, keep it up. LaMelo. LaMelo. Hello. Hello, Ball. LaMelo. LaMelo Ball keeps it up. He'll be a very excellent player, but I just really hope he don't, you know, pull up Carter Williams. I, I'm hating all this light skin hate. It, it, just because he goes, just because he did this and doing this in his rookie uh, year. No, think about it. Think, who talking about Carter Williams right now? You, you're the only person I'm here talking about, talking about Michael Carter Williams. It's like Michael Carter. In, in case, in case you guys don't know, Michael Carter Williams got drafted by the Sixers, and he basically on his first night got a triple double, almost got a quadruple double because of the fact that he kept, he had, I think it was eight steals he had. So, and then as they say in in a famous song, the walls came tumbling down. He basically never <laughs> ever ever played that well again. He played his first game, was excellent, everybody was talking about him, and he probably won won the rookie of the year because of his first game, but here's the deal. 
it was over from he he literally uh squeezed all the juice out of that lemon because basically he does he has the rest of that joint he got no prog whatsoever his second year he wasn't as good he was okay third year they traded him i'm like why did they trade him technically he went from highfalutin to Please hold this bench point down so the bench don't flip up. I mean, he wasn't getting time at all. It, it was terrible. Then he went to Chicago and pretty much looked pretty good there. But again, first couple of games, he was good. After that, hello, bench. How are you today? It's a, like you're going right to the bench. It's so, like I, couldn't believe. I think he might be the most disappointed player that came into the lead. No. No. Who? See, this is why I'm glad I'm here. Education is my thing. <laughs> Exhibit number one, Sean Bradley. Are you nuts? I would, I, I would like they to recall this who, joker, who they said <laughs> this joker was going to revolutionize, and this is the word they use: revolutionize basketball. Seven three, I think he was. Um, they, I mean, they show pictures of this guy running up and down the court, looking like a deer, just, just stretching. I mean, I'm kind of like, what in the world is going on? I mean, I mean, but but you know, you know how they do it at draft nights. They show your they show your best film on draft night. Not all of it, your best film. He got to the Sixers, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the Joker looked looked like he was shot in both legs. Couldn't <laughs> run, couldn't run, couldn't shoot. It was it was it was, it was it's like it was. The most terrible thing I'd ever seen, and the fact that he was he was so so tall and wasn't leading the league in blocks. What? <laughs> Just excuse me. You need to. It's like every time somebody come near you in your lane, you need to be putting that joint in the first row. Back. Just like that. Back. This Joker was not even close to talented as they said he was. He <laughs> was a fraud. I said the word. Yes. Fraud. He was a fraud. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> to my viewers and to everybody who would listen to this. Who? Who is that? <laughs> Nobody think, know who he is. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Y'all people know y'all internet thing. Look up Sean Bradley and see if y'all not disappointed and y'all didn't put no money on him. Just think about that. Think I, you, you'll come away from the videos looking, wow, he actually played in the league. Yeah, he played in the league. Got drafted number two that year. He got drafted number two. We could have picked up anybody else but brought Sean Bradley. But, is, uh, it, is it me or a lot of number one picks are very disappointing? Not a lot of them. Some of them uh, got picked on potential. Most of them ended up receiving that potential. They worked hard and they, and they ended up being that dude. But um, there's, there was just a few of them that were... Uh, Mistakes. <laughs> um, mistakes. Y- yeah, mistakes. That's gotta, mistakes. Uh. Oh. Like, <laughs> that's a or, that's a big that's a big word to maybe, use. Maybe maybe a bigger word would be illusion. See, wow. see, here, see here's the, here's the deal. There was a um, and I can't remember his name, and I don't think he's still in the league. <laughs> like, An illusion, so to speak. <laughs> he's like he's like this. Hmm. He's like this. You ever thinking about getting traded to free agent? Oh, I don't know that team. Uh, yeah, you yeah, to me, you know. Traded to free agents. <laughs> Traded to free agents. All right, so that's the end of our new ball of news, and we're going hot straight into other sports news. All right, can Newton help his teammate to get his bonus by throwing another complete pass? I think that was the game he lost. I think the last game he lost. You sure that was Cam Newton that did that? I thought that was uh I thought that was uh Russell Wilson who hit uh more because he had a clause in this joint that he, if he got sixty catches, he would get a hundred thousand dollars more more in his check that year. Did I get it mixed up? You might have because because I'm pretty they were talking about they were talking about that on, on NFL network. No, about, I thought I thought I thought Russell was on the Seahawks. Yeah, he is. Yeah, 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 no, 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 it is Ken Newton, then. It is Ken Newton. Cause they lost this game. So they lost the game. Yeah. But he threw, he threw it in there. Okay, okay. Which I, I, know that, I know that that happened with Russell Wilson also. It's like because people were talking about um, he made a pass and they didn't have to throw the ball mm. at all. All they could do is run it out and run the clock out. But mm. they, threw, they threw the ball to uh, Moore 
to give him 60 catches, I think it was, and he got he got an incentive of a hundred thousand dollars after that. So that, that's my team. So I know about these. Mm, so yeah, that might be wrong with the first news right there. You know, yeah, <laughs> that sounds like you're right. I ain't gonna hold you. Mm. <laughs> All right. So the Mets finalized a deal on a big player. I think it's a shortstop. Uh, Franzo, Franz. Is that Francisco? Francisco. Francisco? Lenore. This is apparently a big trade for them. They've been trying to finalize it for a minute. And look like it's coming to the conclusion. Mm. This guy comes from the Cleveland's. Mm. All right, next news. Hall of Fame baseball coach Tommy Lasorda. Yes. Has uh, unfortunately died. He is in the Hall of Fame baseball, not coaches. Yes. I'm thinking coaches. Yeah, yes. coaches. Managers is what they call them in baseball. Yeah, managers, coach. Mm-hmm. He was highly respected of his peers. And I think he died like last week when I'm recording this. Mm-hmm. Prayers go out to his friends and family. And uh, guess, guess, guess what's next on the news? Read that, read that. Oh, Seahawks is out. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, the Seahawks had lost. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's your team, right? Yes, it is. Um... <laughs> Anywho, I'm, I'm going to have a nice little soliloquy and I'm going to close my mouth on this one. Uh, <laughs> Russell Wilson was horrible. He was horrible. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. <laughs> all right. Speaking of the Washington football team, they got out. They got kicked out of the playoffs. Now listen. Now listen. Let me let me just let me just say this about about Washington. I just went on about them for a good good ten minutes. I'm probably gonna cut that out. Just just let yeah. you know. It, it was like about ten minutes. I went on for about ten minutes about Washington. But let li- listen. Washington was in a bad was in a bad situation. They had they brought back Alex Alex Smith, who wasn't a hundred percent and. Basically, their offense was not clicking on all cylinders. They have a great defense, and the defense was tired because the offense was not was not holding up their end of the bargain, and the defense was out there too long. Basically, and, and you do this against uh, Tom Brady, you can forget about it. it, it it's it's like it's like if Tom Brady even senses that that your cornerbacks are tired. It's on and popping. <laughs> you can forget about it. So that that's a, that's enough on that. It's like um, that. There was no way Washington Washington went into that situation in a bad light. And my thought was no way no way they were going to win that game. Their offense would have had to have stepped it up at least two hundred percent, and that wasn't going to happen. Mm. Go ahead. So yeah, we saw this game. Steelers are out. Man, that, <laughs> man, that freaking game. That yeah. freaking, like, I saw the score, and I was like, yo, what the heck? Yo, they lost. <laughs> I saw, I, I wow. walked in there, like, in the third quarter. I was like, look at the score. It was like 20-something to 40. I was like, uh-uh. Um, uh-uh. Listen. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's out. All you need to know is Ben Rossenberger turned the ball over three times in the first quarter, and basically, uh, it was twenty-eight to nothing after the first quarter. Most people say that's over. That 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 game is over. They had they had no turn. Like the other team had no turnovers. That's correct. The whole game. That's correct. How do you let that? Ha- What's going on with your defense? They were tops in sacks. They were number one in sacks. Oh, well, where were that team was at uh, last night? Um, well, here's how you frustrate uh, pass rushers. You get the ball out of your hands. If you're passing the ball, you get the ball out of your hands, or you run it down their throat. They did both yesterday, oh. and then, and it's like I'm telling you, he was um, that little man was throwing darts last night. Uh, the average was uh, 2.17 seconds that he was throwing the ball. 2.1 seconds. It's like you don't have a chance to beat your man in 2.17 oh, seconds. You're not doing it. Everything was a quick throw or a devastating run. Here's another little fun fact: two of Cleveland starting starting linemen were out for this game. So they were dealing. Minute. They were dealing with two. Yeah, they were dealing with two two rookies in key in key spots, and they were still blowing them off. They blowing them off. So they were blowing right off the line. So so it was it was a uh, it was a dominant performance. And I called I called him the little man. I apologize. Baker Mayfield. That's their quarterback. 
He looked phenomenal last night. Now, their next game is going to be against the Chiefs. Let's see if they do it twice. If they do it twice, I'm going to be pulling for them to go to the Super Bowl. Nah, I mean, what I think was important. Oh, yeah, by the way, you said the cameraman is dirty and zooming in on that quarterback face after he lost that game. What? No, it was a, like he literally was crying. You can see him crying on camera. I'm like, yo, what the heck, bro? Yo, Y'all drawing. Yo, Y'all drawing. Get Ross the camera off of him. Ross's burger was sitting there on the sideline while everybody else had left the field. He was still on the sideline. No. I felt I felt bad for him, but I didn't because I really don't like Pittsburgh. I really don't like Pittsburgh. They have cheat. They cheated our team. They cheated another team out of, out of the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. You can't, you can't convince me of what I saw that John when they played Arizona in a championship. He had one foot down. The other one was folded underneath the one foot. He had one foot down. You can't you can't change my name, but they cheated them. Even even when they reviewed it, how do you not see the one foot down? It doesn't make any sense. They cheated them out of that Super Bowl. They cheated uh, Arizona. Arizona should have a Super Bowl Super Bowl ranks. Right. They cheated them out of that joint, right. and and they took when when the Seahawks was playing them, they took away ten points, took ten points off the joint off of phantom calls. It was terrible. Anywho, we're gonna we're gonna keep it moving, we're gonna keep it moving. 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 I looked at that thing thirty one minutes. That's Bears. a lot of minutes. Bears so out. Bears are out. Uh, so no, I, I seen that game. Uh, no, no, said. no, no, said. no. Bears, Bears are out. They, they, right. they did not. They they were not. Good offensively, so that's all of it. I'm gonna have a good 30 minutes of uh, editing this video. Evan, are you listening to this? Thank you. But <laughs> all right, so like we're gonna hop into my favorite part of the podcast called one on one. Let's get it. No, no, no. Let's get it. Let's get it. I'm gonna keep all this in, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it. <laughs> all right. So, Kevin Garnett and Vince Carter. Who, who do you got? Who you got on this side? What do you mean? Playing each other? Yeah, one-on-one. One-on-one pickup game. What are you thinking? I'm thinking this is a mismatch. <laughs> uh, Vince Carter can shoot outside, inside, and slam over top of your head. Uh, Kevin Garnett is a good defensive player, but he ain't that good. He loses in the landslide. Sure, I think he can at least slow him down. I mean, like, and he, like, like one on one, you got you got less options, so it's like more direct. Young man, as a person who's who's seen all both both careers from beginning to end, Vince Carter's just ended last year. He looked good last year, by the way. Yes, he did. Uh-huh. Now, now, I'm sorry, but. You know, big men usually don't last as long as guards do. So, it basically basically is no no contest to me. Vince Carter was a semi-dominant human being on the court. If if Kevin Garnett got to post him up all day long, Kevin Garnett was Kevin Garnett was going to win. But see, here's where we have the problem. All right, right. Here's the problem. As soon as he put that ball down on the ground, it's, it's stripped. Bye bye. This is mine. And then he's going. He's going to go to the three point line and just dig it out. So again, mismatch to me. So so he got Vince Carter got him in threes. He got him. He got him in D. And he also got him defense. I gotta no. Yeah, I gotta rephrase that. He got him in defense. No, I actually think uh, Kevin Garnett's a better defensive player. Better defensive player. But okay. the fact the fact that he's six eleven. Yeah. And he's he's six seven. Right. All right. That gives him a considerable two dribble situation. If he dribbles that thing more than twice and doesn't turn and shoot, it's getting stripped. I'm sorry. Huh, let's say he backs him down every time. Well, we got, time. Well, excuse me, you have to. You six eleven. You got you got exactly what what is that? Eleven twelve. Six eleven. All right, right. You six eleven. So he's six seven. So that is ex- that's exactly four inches. And he has monkey man arms. Are you serious? The Joker looked like uh, Stretch Armstrong out there. Uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic. He throw up a half hook. See, his hands up here. His hand can only get that high. It's over. <laughs> but, but again, two dribble rule. If he puts that thing down, he's stripped. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Handle. 
Uh, what about Inside Game? This is no. That, that, that. It's no. Is that Kevin Garnett? Yeah, that's that's Kevin Garnett. Yeah. It, it's no. There's no way of. Uh, no, I mean, like, if Garnett can like back him down from the three point line, where they gonna be past chapping and ball that every time. He got a good chance of winning this. But two dribble rule. I just explained this to you. If he dribbles that thing more than twice, it's stretch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it's like if you can take one, two, and you make that half hook. If he does that every time, he's good. He hits that third joint. Whoop, whoop, it's gone. I'm sorry. Alright, I try to get on Kevin Garnett's side. It's not looking good for that guy. He's on a ropes. Be throwing in the tail. <laughs> All right, Vince Carter won this round of one on one. All right, so this is ending my show. Call the foul line. We'll be taking a couple shots and you know talk a little foul. Yep. Uh, you want to hear my you know beautiful voice and with this beautiful face? You know I'm also on uh, YouTube called PT Sean. You know you probably saw the thing. You probably know what to do. You know. Just check it out, you know. Just poke your head in and poke your head out. You don't have to watch one of my videos. Just check out my page. And also, I'm on Instagram. It's it's underscore showing 99. Like, it's literally a it's in it underscore showing 99. And you want to do any shout outs? To who? <laughs> Who's going to be seeing it? Uh, he won't give me back my grandchildren. Let me out. Someone call the cops. <laughs> uh, okay. So don't you know, pay no attention to that. You don't know, pay no attention to this man locked in my basement while I'm filming his ass. Uh, no, no attention at all. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I look. I gotta cut his hair every week, so I don't know why he complaining now. So like, yeah. At least he got a good fade going on. Like, <laughs> oh my God, all right. So I'm gonna check out. All right, y'all be good. And y'all dribble on the good side of life. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that my cash first. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's nice. I won't say that every video. All right, see y'all.